Greetings and welcome people. Just a quick couple of circuits around my local loop today. So I am out to just get a couple of comparison clips on my two different helmet cameras. See if uh, one's significantly better than the other. So what I'm going to do right at this moment is to hand you back to Mighty Beanstick, uh, me, back in the studio, uh, studio, who will give a little bit of a discussion over the different cameras that I use, the mirror camera and the two helmet cameras why I've chosen what I've chosen and he's an awfully nice chap so I'll hand you back to him and thank you for that kind introduction from Mighty Beanstick and now you join me um, Mighty Beanstick back in the studio which looks remarkably like the area where I fixed my camera the other day so as I said at the end, of, or put a, tech, a caption on the end of that video, I was going to do a little bit about the helmet cameras and other cameras that I've got that I use. Now I know that um, I've mentioned time and time again that I'm reluctant to even consider the big name cameras like GoPros and Sonys and Drifts and things, mainly because of the cost. I can't afford... 250, 300 pounds or more for a for a name on a on a plastic case. Um, yes, I realise that they when they work well, they work really well. Um, but I have heard also lots of stories that sometimes even they have problems with file corruption, freezing, hanging, whatever, just simply failing from time to time. So I'm going to go with what I've decided to use, and this is what I have. Now this you will recognise as the camera that we fixed the lens cover the other day. And this is its successor. Now you can probably see that the, the newer camera is, if I get them both in shot and about the same distance, is a lot more streamlined. It doesn't have the, the sort of the bulkiness of the original Mio and one thing I quite like is it is all black. I was never a fan of the bright orange of the the original helmet camera. Now as I mentioned in the previous video the big factor about these types of cameras is the form factor. I like this bullet style camera, this flashlight style, especially this particular one um, because I don't want a bulky camera sticking out the side of my crash helmet looking like a mutant Teletubby. Um, so both these cameras have that bullet style and they fit into a clamp which slides into a, a mount on the, so that's stuck on the side of the crash helmet. Now this is my, my, my mirror mounted camera and as you can see obviously this one sticking out from the side of the helmet sticks out a lot further than this one would because obviously this one has to go on a mount as well um, either a, a skeleton or cage mount for riding in decent weather um, but if I'm going to be out and the chance of the weather turning nasty I would then obviously have to put the camera in a waterproof housing which makes it even bigger so that's why principally why I won't have one of these on the side of my helmet. The other factor in my decision on which cameras to go for is the ability to run external power. Now I'll just go backtrack a little bit. Both of these cameras, uh, well in fact all three of these cameras, have built-in microphones and they do not have the ability to have an external microphone plugged in. Which for me, the way I work, is not a problem because I record my 
commentary from a Bluetooth headset onto a phone connected to that headset and I use a Bluetooth audio recording app on the phone and that seems to work well enough it uh, gets me what I need without having to worry about plugging wires into cameras and things or having extra wires unnecessarily running from my helmet into another a device um, so that works well for me the big thing about these is as I say they have built-in microphones uh, in fact this one the microphone is that little pinhole there but of course as soon as you start riding on on a motorcycle you get up to anything above about 25 30 miles an hour all these microphones do is pick up a roaring rushing wind noise so they're no good so on this camera I even stuck a bit of duct tape over the microphone hole which is underneath there so I'll probably do the same for this one but I don't use the audio off the cameras anyway and I just thought of something else I was going to say about them then but it's slipped my mind so I'll carry on um, the big factor that I don't use often but when I do need it I really want to use it is the ability to run external power to these batteries obviously these two batteries have fixed installed batteries you cannot replace the batteries this one has the usual SJ4000 type camera uh, battery which fits under it Oop. here when I can I just cut my nail so I can't get hold of this thing now there we go just fits in there and you can replace that the reason I don't like that is because I very often even though I carry spare batteries with me I don't realize that the batteries run out in the camera and I forget to replace it and so that's loads of footage gone so with these cameras I can actually run external power although I can do it I can do it with this one all I've done is I've got another case where I've made a hole in the side here that I can plug a USB lead into and run that to external power um, I have a USB port connect uh, set up on the bike um, with these ones you can probably see these wires here these are actually the waterproof USB power connectors for these cameras I'll go I'll use the original camera because this is the one I have actually used the external power lead on you just unscrew the end cap obviously there's the various connectors and buttons and controls and the SD card just unscrew that plug this in like so and just screw down the retainer retaining nut and there you now have a waterproof USB cable and what I do with that is I have a USB power pack in my jacket pocket I run the cable around the back of my crash helmet where I have some clips stuck on there to route the cable snugly around the back of the crash helmet down under my collar on the left side and to this battery pack which let me just plug in like that plugs in powers up job done and I did actually use this setup uh, a couple of months ago when I went on the Andyman cam and Phil 480 meetup ride uh, where I knew that the cam the, bat the battery in this camera I think lasts about an hour and a half I've never actually tested it knowingly I don't think I, don't, I think I possibly have but I knew it wouldn't last the whole day and I knew I was going to be out most of the day yes when I got to Lumi's I could have used this this battery pack to recharge this but recharging one of these takes two to three hours and obviously wouldn't have had that time at Lumi's to do so so I ran the camera from this battery pack um, I think it barely it used one LED to run this battery for this camera goodness me to run this camera for all the time that I was uh, recording on the run and I think it was about three and a half hours total recording time something like three and a half four hours so obviously longer than the battery in the camera would have lasted um, so that worked really well 
and I also have a bigger battery pack here which I can fall back to if I need to but I'll probably more likely carry that with me when I go on any trips away to use it if there's any emergency recharging or phones or etc needed when I'm actually riding I will probably just use this one the other limiting factor on both of these cameras is the fact that they only take a 32 gigabyte memory card um, and I found that 1080p 30 that will give something like five to five and a half hours of recording time which on most runs out is is more than adequate on a longer run if I was traveling say setting off early one morning heading to Wales or Scotland that might be a bit more of a problem but of course I can always carry additional memory cards they're a lot easier to carry than additional batteries which you can't carry for these anyway and because this waterproof end cap is removable and quite quite easy to replace the memory cards so with both of these cameras um, obviously the M350 is no longer a current currently available model it's just out of production for a couple of years now the M560 I think is still a current model it's still you can still find it on Amazon and eBay and other places um, I got this I think for £75 and this for £85 and at that price for a 1080p30 standard action helmet camera I think I'm happy to pay that for the waterproof casing and the both with the waterproof USB cable um, that that is primarily what I'm looking for um, as I say, with this style of camera, yes, you can replace the batteries, but you've got to be aware that when the battery runs out, or maybe set yourself a schedule that you stop every hour, change the battery, whether it's run out or not, and carry on. The good thing about this camera is it will take a 64 gig memory card, and running that at 1080p 30, of course, gives you just over 10 hours of recording time, which for a dash cam running all day and I've got it on loop recording as well um, you don't worry about running out of memory on one of these things um, the only thing of course is the need to replace the battery and the bulk of it as I say I won't wear I won't mount something like that especially in a case that size on the side of my crash helmet and as I wear a flip front crash helmet mounting it on my chin bar is not really an option yes I could do it but I don't really want to. So there we are. That's a bit of discussion about the, the cameras. Um, I will now hand you back to Mighty Bean Stick on the, out on the road, our mobile unit. And he will now proceed to record a couple of test clips, one from each of these cameras on the same stretch of road as close as possible similar conditions and we'll see what the footage looks like in comparison back to back okay so back to you mighty bean stick good luck and ride safe so here we are at the beginning of the first test clip like i said just a quick loop round and the other thing i'm testing today is my vented jacket at last, the weather's warm enough. And it seems to be uh, very vented. It's quite pleasant. I feel the breeze through on my arms and my torso. Very nice. I think that'll do very nicely. Could have done with it a couple of months ago when we had the really hot weather, but here we go. By now I'm prepared for summer next year. So I'm, I'm doing these two little short circuits so I can get short test clips on both cameras 
at almost exactly the same time and under ex almost exactly the same conditions. Obviously I can't predict the uh, traffic, but... The weather and other, tem other, other temperatures. What am I talking about? The weather and other factors should be the same. Ish. Uh, let's see how these two clips compare. I don't think I'll bother doing any commentary for the rest of this or for the second clip, so... Let's just enjoy the weather and enjoy the ride. blue sky, beautiful. And here we start the second test clip, same stretch of road. Only about 10 minutes later. With the other camera. Get me a test ride on one of those maxi scooters one of these days. Seems to be a bit of a myth that people who ride proper motorbikes, as I think most people who hate scooters would say, don't like scooters, but I do. My first three bikes were scooters.